Are you suffering from dry eye? If you've ever looked for dry eye drops or treatments in your local pharmacy, you've probably already realized that there are seemingly endless options for dry eye disease. They can range from cheap, no-name, generic eye drops for $4 a bottle to ointments, gels, warm compresses, humidifiers, all the way up to procedures done in doctor's offices that can cost up to $1,000 per treatment. Although having all of these options may seem like a good thing, research studies and my own personal experience have shown that having too many choices can actually be overwhelming and cause anxiety instead. I get it. You want to find a dry eye treatment that's safe, effective, and won't break the bank. You want to make a good choice for your eye health and your wallet too. But when you walk through a pharmacy filled with what seems like hundreds of dry eye products, or you scroll through Amazon with literally thousands of options and reviews, or you read research articles or watch videos like this one, you now have to decide which treatment to choose from among countless options. And that decision can feel overwhelming and exhausting. And this feeling, it's pretty universal. Psychologists actually refer to it as decision fatigue. So my goal in this video is to help you simplify the dry eye treatment process. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist with Puente Hills Eye Care, and I make videos on vision, eye health, and eye surgery. I'll be using my background in research, my experience as an ophthalmologist, and the experience of my patients to help you design a simple dry eye treatment regimen that's safe, effective, and reasonably priced. That way, you don't have to waste your time and money analyzing and trying different products that may or may not be that effective or safe. And full disclosure, I have zero financial relationship with any of the products or companies I'll be discussing in this video. I have no affiliate links. I have nothing to sell you. My goal is to share my expertise to help you with your dry eye symptoms so you can have the time and energy to focus on the more important things in life, like clicking the like and subscribe button below. So let's get started. This simplified regimen consists of three parts, eye drops, warm compress, and environment modification. And that's it. This is the regimen that I recommend as a starting point for most patients when they first come to see me with dry eye complaints. So let's talk eye drops. If you've watched any of my previous videos on dry eye, you now know that the critical component of dry eye disease is the tear film. Normally, we all have a tear film that forms a protective layer over the cornea or the front surface of the eye. And the tear film is composed of three layers. The mucin layer, which stabilizes the tear film and allows it to spread evenly over the surface of the eye, the aqueous layer, or the water layer, which lubricates the eye and washes away debris, and the oil layer, which seals the tear layer and prevents tears from evaporating too quickly. If any of these three layers is compromised, then the whole tear film can break down, leaving the cornea exposed and vulnerable to damage from dry eye. Once the corneal surface starts to break down, cells start emitting chemical messengers called cytokines to unleash an inflammatory cascade, which can lead to many of the symptoms we see with dry eye including pain and greediness, sensitivity, redness, and irritation. So when we are considering eye drops to help rejuvenate our tear film, we need to make sure that they are helping all three layers of our tear film. Not only do we want simplicity in our dry eye regimen, but we also want simplicity in the composition of our eye drops. If there are ingredients in those eye drops that have not been proven to protect or rejuvenate the tear film, we don't need them. So redness relief, itch relief, that's out. Why? Because those types of eye drops have other active ingredients that can have side effects and unintended reactions like rebound redness from redness relief eye drops or worsening dry eye from antihistamine allergy eye drops. Again, this is based on the assumption that we know we're treating dry eye. If you're having eye redness and irritation, maybe also with a component of itch, make sure that your eye condition is actually dry eye rather than, for example, inflammation or uveitis or allergic conjunctivitis your local eye doctor would be able to help you make the diagnosis. We also want no preservatives. Benz alconium chloride or BAK has been proven in multiple studies to cause damage to the cornea and the pink tissue surrounding the eye called a conjunctiva. There's actually a medical condition called conjunctivitis medicamentosa, which is characterized by inflammation and redness of the conjunctiva, which causes pain, irritation, and itching. Medicamentosa is caused by continued exposure to the BAK preservative, which is present in many over-the-counter eye drops, including lubricating eye drops, as well as glaucoma medications. And the best method for treating medicamentosa is to stop using eye drops altogether. So when I recommend eye drops for dry eye to patients, I usually recommend preservative-free eye drops because they don't contain those harsh, 
potentially toxic chemicals like BAK. Now, the preservatives inside normal eye drops serve a purpose. They prevent the growth of bacteria. So if you don't have preservatives like BAK in your eye drops, if the solution gets contaminated, then bacteria or mold can grow inside the solution and obviously that's dangerous to apply those eye drops to your eyes. That's why preservative-free artificial tears need to come in special packaging to prevent contamination and they tend to be more expensive. There are two main types of preservative-free packaging that we have in the US. The first type are these single-use blister packages. They usually come in packs of 30 or so and you're supposed to use each one once for both eyes and then toss it out. There's actually enough fluid for about five to six drops in each one, but you're supposed to only use each dropper at once, then throw it out. Remember, there's no preservatives or BAK in these drops, so if you accidentally touch the tip or contaminate the solution, then there's nothing stopping the bacteria from multiplying and contaminating the solution. The second option for applying preservative-free eye drops are these newer multi-use bottles. Over the last year or two, more manufacturers have released preservative-free versions of their eye drops using these bottles. These bottles have special one-way valves and filters to prevent bacterial contamination, so they can be used multiple times even though the solution inside is preservative-free. I like these multi-use bottles better than the single-use dropperettes because they have less waste and they're more convenient. The one drawback with these bottles are that sometimes it can take quite a bit of force to push out an eye drop especially if you have arthritis or a small tremor. Okay, so we now have all the important features we want in an eye drop. We want it to help restore all three layers of the tear film and most importantly, the oil layer because that's what prevents our tears from evaporating. We want it to be preservative free to avoid conjunctival toxicity from BAK and we want it to be in a convenient multi-use bottle. Oh yeah, and it shouldn't be too expensive. With all of these components in mind, the one eye drop I recommend is the Sistain Complete Eye Drop in the Preservative Free Multi-Use Bottle. Again, full disclosure, I have no financial relationship with Sistain or Alcon, the company that manufactures these eye drops. But let me tell you why I think Sistain Complete is a wonderful first line option for patients with dry eye. It replenishes all three layers of the tear foam. Let's review these three layers and the ingredient list to see how Sistain Complete works. Okay, first, the mucin layer. Our body has several mucous membranes, which are protective layers of cells that protect our organs. We have mucous membranes in our nose, our mouth, our lungs, and most importantly, our conjunctiva. Mucous membranes are characterized by the thick, sticky mucin that they produce. The way I like to think of the mucin layer is by visualizing snail mucin. It's this sticky slime which protects the underside of the snail. Imagine a snail crawling along some rough concrete. If you rubbed off all the snail mucus, the underside of the snail would be totally exposed. And if it tried to crawl along, for example, a concrete sidewalk, it would get all torn up and bloody. And even if you replace the mucus with just plain water, the snail still would get injured because water by itself doesn't provide this nice, smooth coating. It's the mucus which provides this protective, viscous slime which allows the snail to glide over rough surfaces without any damage. Our eyes also naturally have this layer of mucus to coat the cornea, to allow the eyelid to smoothly glide over the surface of the cornea. So Sistain Complete has this ingredient called hydroxypropyl guar, which is made from guar beans. Guar beans are basically a type of green bean originating from India. Manufacturers take these beans and pulverize them to make guar gum, which can then be further processed and added to eye drops. When guar is added to water, it makes this viscous, slimy substance, which mimics mucus. And that's exactly what hydroxypropyl guar is doing in Sistain Complete. It helps to give it this viscous, slippery property in the same way the mucus layer does in our natural tears. In the medical and scientific literature, the word scientists use for ingredients like hydroxypropyl guar is that they're mucomimetic, meaning that they help to mimic the effects of natural mucus. Okay. So mucus layer, check. What about the oil layer? Remember, our meibomian glands release oil called meibom into the tear film. If you ever try to put oil and water together in a cup, you'll see that they don't mix. Instead, the oil stays separate from the water and sits on top of the water in its own oil layer. The oil in our tear film also sits on the outside of the watery part of our tears and the oil serves as a protective coating that prevents our tears from evaporating too quickly. Sistain Complete contains mineral oil which helps to rejuvenate the oil layer of our tear film and helps to prevent our tears from evaporating. And lastly, the aqueous layer, 
We need to make sure there's water in our tears to keep the surface moisturized and to wash away any debris from the surface of our eyes. Cystine Complete, like all other artificial tears, also has sterile water in its ingredients. So Cystine Complete replenishes all three layers of the tear film. Check. It comes in a preservative-free version. Check. And it comes in an easy-to-use, multi-use bottle. Check. And it's reasonably priced and easily accessible, at least in the US. Check and check. That's why I recommend this drop as a good first option for patients with dry eye. Okay, now that we have the eye drop component figured out, what's the next component of our dry eye starter kit? It's warm compress. Studies have shown that 86% of patients with dry eye have a component of meibomian gland dysfunction. Like we mentioned before, our meibomian glands are supposed to secrete oil, also known as meibum, into our tears. And that oil should have a consistency similar to olive oil, but sometimes our glands can get blocked or inflamed, and those secretions can harden and solidify and have a consistency more similar to butter. Patients with meibomian gland dysfunction don't have free-flowing meibum, so there's less oil in the tear film, leading to quicker evaporation of tears. Many dry eye patients would benefit from treatment of the meibomian glands. Several meibomian gland treatments like lipoflow and tear care are offered by eye doctors to be done in the office. Now, these treatments are effective for many patients, but they are expensive. Treatment with these devices can cost anywhere from $700 to $1,500. And the truth is, these treatments are based on two simple principles, heat and mechanical massage. These devices are carefully calibrated to heat the eyelids and oil glands to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which has been shown in research studies to be the temperature at which the oil in your meibomian glands melt into a liquid form. After the meibomian glands are properly heated, either the device or your doctor gently massages your eyelids to squeeze out the oil from your glands. In my previous video on natural treatments for dry eye, I discovered a way you can cheaply and safely recreate these treatments at home. If you want to learn more about that process in depth, you can watch that video here. But briefly, you use an electric temperature calibrated warm compress like this Aroma Season device that's easily found on Amazon. For the Aroma Season device, the high setting provides 44.5 degrees Celsius or 112 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect for eyelid warm compress. So you use the Aroma Season device on the high setting for 20 minutes, once or twice a day. After finishing the warm compress, gently massage your eyelids using your fingertips. You want to use your non-dominant hand to anchor your skin along your bony brow or your orbital bone. If you don't anchor your skin, it'll just flop around with your finger and it won't do you much good. So you anchor your skin with your non-dominant hand and you can use your pointer finger from your dominant hand to gently massage along your eyelids from one side to the other. Then you can repeat the massage on your lower eyelid. You can anchor your skin along your upper cheek or the lower part of your orbital bone and you go along the eyelid from one side to the other. You can go along each eyelid four or five times and repeat this process for all four eyelids. You also want to make sure that you're not pushing inwards towards the back of your head but you're just simply going up to down. By doing this optimized warm compress regimen, You'll ensure that your meibomian glands are in tip-top shape and functioning as they should to provide as much natural oil as possible to your tears, thereby creating a healthy, protective tear film for your eyes. The last component of the Dry Eye Starter Pack is environment and behavior modification. Recent research is continuing to show that our daily habits and our environment play a large role in dry eye disease. The widespread use of computers, iPads, phones, and TV means that our collective screen time is at an all-time high, and all that screen time is associated with worsening dry eye. Researchers' studies have shown that when we're relaxing, we usually blink around 22 times per minute. But when we are reading or working on a screen, we become so focused on what we're looking at that, on average, our blink rate drops down to 5 to 7 blinks per minute. And that decreased blink rate means one thing, worsen dry eye. That's because the longer our eyes stay open in between blinks, the more our tear film evaporates and leaves our cornea exposed to external damage, which leads to more severe dry eye symptoms. So what behavior modification can you do to prevent this? Well, first, try to avoid as much screen time as possible, particularly if you're suffering from dry eye. But I get it. Sometimes our jobs or school require us to be on the screens for up to 8 to 10 hours per day. If you don't have much choice in decreasing screen time, 
then a good habit to follow is the 20 20 20 rule that is every 20 minutes take a 20 second blink break and stare out into the distance at an object about 20 feet away while making good deliberate blinks these blinks will help restore your tear film and protect your eyes from dryness one more effective way to treat your dry eye is to raise the relative humidity of your environment several research studies have found that there is a strong association between dry environments and dry eye disease in this study from the uk researchers placed research subjects in either a normal environment which consisted of a room set at 40 percent relative humidity and 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or a dry environment set at 5% relative humidity and the same 21 degrees Celsius temperature. After just one hour in the dry environment of 5% relative humidity, research subjects showed significantly increased tear evaporation rates and decreased ocular comfort, decreased tear breakup time, and decreased tear production. In short, their dry eye disease was significantly more severe after being exposed to the dry environment for just one hour. The ideal relative humidity for a healthy tear film is 45%, but there are many times when we're exposed to environments with much lower relative humidity. For example, during the winter time when those heaters dry everything out in your home and office. So it would be a good idea to set up a humidifier in your bedroom and maybe your work desk so that you can raise the humidity in your immediate area and therefore create an environment that promotes a healthier tear film and cornea. If you're not sure what the relative humidity is in your home or office, you can buy a hygrometer or basically a device that measures the ambient relative humidity in your environment. You can find ones on Amazon for pretty cheap. Or better yet, you can get a humidifier with a built-in hygrometer sensor so that you can set the relative humidity that you want and the humidifier self calibrates its mist output so that it keeps the relative humidity in your room exactly where you want it. Airplane cabins also have notoriously low relative humidity, about 10% at altitude. It isn't practical to bring a humidifier with you onto an airplane, so I recommend for patients with dry eye to bring a good supply of artificial tears onto airplanes to keep their eyes well hydrated during their flight. And lastly, if you regularly work or relax in an area in front of an air vent, make sure that it's turned away from your face. That constant stream of dry air will dry out your eyes and make your dry eye symptoms worse. Okay, I think that's enough information for this video. But in summary, if you're suffering from dry eye symptoms or have been recently been diagnosed with dry eye, a good starting regimen would be to use preservative-free artificial tears, which replenish all three layers of the tear film. I recommend Sustain Complete Preservative Free Eye Drops in the convenient multi-use bottle. You want to use an optimized warm compress regimen. Aim for 20 minutes per day, once or twice a day by applying carefully calibrated heat using a device such as the Aroma Season Warm Compress to raise the meibomian gland temperature to the magic 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is needed to properly liquefy our natural eyelid oil secretions. Decrease screen time and to remember frequent blink breaks with the 20-20-20 rule if you're going to be looking at a screen for an extended period of time. Use a humidifier to raise the relative humidity in your environment to 45%. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County or Inland Empire area and would like to get your eyes checked for dry eye or to come up with a customized dry eye treatment plan, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. And if you made it this far into the video, that means you're probably really motivated to learn more about the effective treatments for dry eye. You can watch my video here to learn more about the best treatment options for dry eye. Or you can watch my video here to learn more about the evidence-backed ways you can naturally treat your dry eye. I'm Dr. Michael Chuo with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.